Okay, I'm at the shop today, working on dun, 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 the Killer Crawler 2 4x4 truck kit by RC Four Wheel Drive. I did unbox this uh, in my previous video if you guys want to go in and see the parts that are individualized. Shall we get started? Once upon a time, there was a man that had a great hobby addiction for radio control. He had many rigs, he flew many planes, he jumped trucks, and he even crawled on the rocks. And today, I find myself building a quarter scale rock crawler. Trail crawler, we'll see. I'm sure it's gonna try to conquer all. Skid plate assembly, install both shock mounts, okay. Gonna need some countersunk screws. And number two, right out of the gate, complete eight of these uh, suspension links. All right, let's get started. All right, so it's these pieces we're gonna need right here. This will be on either side. One, two. Okay, so something I'm gonna mention for the new folks that are like going to build a kit, whatever kit it is, there are always a lot of screws and nuts that go with a kit. Check it out. All of these are labeled. Yes, look at how many there are. All of them are labeled, right? But it's like like with like countersunk screws or with countersunk and, and onward. If you have this many screws, do not open all the bags and just dump it out, okay? Because it's gonna take you forever to find what's what and what goes where. So save yourself some trouble, keep it in the bag. Uh, I do have a calrc.com uh, pit mat. This whole thing is magnetized. They sent it to me. Thank you, Heath, for having it uh, on the show here. Uh, and you know, you can see it's gotten a lot of good use here at the shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing what I'm doing. I am doing the skid plate where I'm gonna need these uh, M36 millimeter screws. Wanna make sure I've got the angle of everything. Just like the picture, right? I'll try to line it up just to make sure it's not accidentally flipped upside down, right? I know I'm kind of covering some, some things that senior builders know, but senior builders already understand that new folks need help as well. And there's more folks in the hobby now than ever, which is awesome. Now this is metal on metal. And I should be using some blue Loctite right now just to make sure that these don't back out. But to be honest with you, I don't really like using Loctite right in the beginning. I find that if I do uh, make a mistake, I don't have to go back and uh, break free all the, the Loctite. When I'm sure everything is in place, then I'll go back and I'll actually all the metal on metal screws, I'll make sure it has enough Loctite so as it's operating as a machine, it doesn't start dropping screws everywhere. That's always a big pain that can be prevented. Perfect. Everything is just hand tight right now. I don't need to do anything over extra uh, torquey because like I said, I'll take it out and do it again. All right, the skid plate is done. Back to the awesome parts board. <laughs> So, uh, thankfully, they've gone ahead and laid it out very easy to understand from what I've seen so far. Two rod ends, two rods, two rod ends. You know, here's two more, two more, and two more. Eight links laid out just like it is in the instruction book. This is the way I find it's most efficient for me to build at least. Uh, so rod end, set screw, spacer, main uh, rod itself, and then identical on the other side. Lay everything out. Make sure you've got all the pieces that are supposed to be there. Thankfully, <laughs> mine are here. Uh, and it makes it a little easier just to get them finished. There you go, uh, eight suspension links. It was easier uh, to do by hand. I could have used the drill. If you guys want to use the drill, go ahead. Uh, just simply those set screws were large enough and they went into the rod ends easily. Uh, I didn't even need to worry about it. So I just kind of hammered through and there you go, eight suspension links. 
Next up, uh, cantilever assembly, no problem. So we need the bolt and the bearings and the five millimeter E-clip, attach the shocks to the cantilevers. Each one of these steps needs to be done two times. Back to the parts tray for the cantilevers. One, two, three, four. These are all cast aluminum. Nice, look at that. Looks strong. One, two, three, four. Now I'm not gonna put any oil in these shocks because they've come with a small amount of uh, oil in them already. I will tune them after it's built. Let's get this out of the way. All right, so same principle, just kind of laying out the pieces that I want. These are called fix screws, the bearings, and the E-clips. Normally what I like to do is go ahead and build a few of the things that I'm doing ahead of time, just so I can give proper instruction. Now this one and this one are already completed. One bearing on one side, another bearing on the other. Make sure I've got the, oops, make sure I've got the fixed screw going through the right way. This one goes through with zero problem, smoking. And I actually do not have an E-clip tool, but a pair of needle nose. I always try to keep my, my finger um, somewhat close to the E-clip in case it goes flying off. <laughs> so there's one that's completed. That was simple. Bearing, bearing fixed screw went through. So it must've just been that one that was a little bit rough. No big deal. And get the E-clip on there. Zing! <laughs> oh, got it, perfect. Now it's time to attach the actual shock to the cantilever. So I'm gonna flip them around like so. Line up the eyelet, right? You always wanna make sure, let's get that to focus. So shiny. Uh, you wanna make sure to line up the eyelet with the opening or else it's gonna be a challenge for you, right? Especially because they're aluminum. Get that screw right through to the other side. Come on, I'm on camera here. <laughs> Come on there. Just takes patience. Everything about building an RC and even maintaining your RC is about patience, right? You gotta do what needs to be done or else it just doesn't work properly. Hand tight. That's about right. Cantilever set up on the way. Here we go, I went in and hand tightened them off camera. One, two, three, four cantilever arms and small shocks with functioning reservoirs uh, ready to be mounted up. Number five, uh, attach the links to the cantilevers using the 25 millimeter screws and the flange lock nut. Uh, got them. Okay, and then we're gonna be using the skid plate, okay. So let's do the arms first. One, two, three, four. Next. Last lock nut in place. One, two, three, four, all tightened up. Plate in the middle. We'll line this up. There we go. Using the M320 mil. There we are. We're gonna want to place a lock nut on the other side. Repeat this step three more times. And 
I gotta get in there and tighten it up. It's much like surgery, <laughs> I can imagine. I'm trying to stay out of the light so you guys can also see it. There we are. I can't stress enough not over torquing uh, screws when you're working with them, especially on an all aluminum chassis because you don't want to start rounding out those heads, right? Makes it very challenging in the future. Now everything's all snugged up, looking good. Bottom chassis, suspension plates, cantilever system with the suspension links, and of course, these awesome shocks. <laughs> like a kid in a candy store with this, I want to keep on going. 